Hey, what's up, world, and welcome to the 99th edition of the Take One Podcast. I am your host, August C. Jones, and this is part two of me catching up on stuff that I have been slacking on. But in any case, uh, so it's a few things I need to catch up on, just certain little news um, items that I wanted to catch up on. Then I was going to do the box office for this past weekend and talk about the stuff that's like culminating within this week because the movies as you know didn't come out friday of this week which uh of the as of the day that i'm recording this is saturday so you know uh the movies didn't come out yesterday came out wednesday and you know you got early screenings on tuesday and stuff so i'm going to talk a little bit about those movies and i'm going to do something new with the box office segment called what won the weekend basically just my favorites of the weekend or just with this one uh favorites of what won the week or you know whatever but before we even get to that let's go ahead and jump into some more trailer reviews now uh this one isn't one that i'm catching up on this one that i'm talking about first actually came out on thanksgiving and it was the teaser trailer to the lion king which is coming out next year 2019 and is done in the same type of way of what jungle book was done a couple years back where there's no realistic animals there's well there's no real animals in it at all it's all computer generated and to look closely resembling that way you know i know a lot of people were like you know why 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 wouldn't they just use real animals well the reason for it being that a lot of times certain animals you just really can't like direct they're not like people where you could say okay go right here look this way blah 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 and all that stuff animals it takes a lot a lot of times people be on set just like with kids you know uh it takes a lot to direct an animal to do the things that you need it to do in order for that scene to be completed and with Lion King being a, a movie where you have animals speaking and talking and doing certain things, you kind of want it, you kind of want the animals to move in a certain type of way. And you just can't really manipulate that in real life. So, yeah, this is the best thing that we can do where we're getting computer generated, uh, you know, animals to move the way that they want to. And it looks realistic. So I guess you could say it's kind of like the Hannah Montana thing. You know, you get the best of both worlds. But in any case, um, this teaser trailer really didn't show anything but what the design of the world looks like. And, you know, how it looks or whatever. I mean, even though we got like a taste of that in Jungle Book. But we got a taste of how good the computer generated animals look and they look pretty good they look pretty good i can see that there's still some more touch-ups that they need to be doing on it because i don't know from what i remember with jungle book those looks those animals look crazy real and this one you can kind of tell that it's you know it, it is a little bit computer generated um but you know we're still months off you know so you know they have still a lot to do all it showed in the trailer review, well, well, all it showed up in the trailer, in the teaser trailer, was just the beginning scene of the Lion King movie, where you have all the animals getting together to see the new king, and then, you know, uh, what's his name, Rafiki, taking him from uh, his mother's arms and holding him up for the uh, world, well, for the um, animal kingdom to see. And that's really basically about it. And then you got the, the theme song and everything goes. It's just showing you just what we're in for it's not a full-on trailer like i said like with the toy story trailers they're really just there to let you know that the movie is coming out and everything else but i really liked it i really liked it it's not anything to go over the moon for it's just like i know a lot of people who wasn't expecting it or never heard about you know it actually being a remake of the lion king movie coming out i know a lot of them were surprised like what they making a lion king movie and, you know, people like me, I'm just like, yeah, I, I, I known this last year. <laughs> you know, it's like this. That's one of the things that I love about, you know, uh, just finding, you know, just know about a lot of the inside things when it comes to movies, what movies are coming out, you know, and stuff like that. So when we finally get a trailer, it was like people are surprised, but we like, 
Yeah, we already kind of knew that this was coming out. We've seen some set photos and some stuff that was leaked out some months back. You just now find out. I don't know. I just, I just like that whole thing. But yeah, the trailer was decent. The trailer was really good. Um, I just can't wait to see what the rest of the film looks like. You know, as far as like, you know, the, the future trailers, the first official full length trailer and just seeing like what all the other scenes look like, you know, and how everything comes through. Cause it seemed like they got like great actors voicing them. I mean, you got James Earl Jones coming back from Mufasa. You got, uh, Beyonce coming, you know, coming into the fray. So, you know, you got a lot of notable voices and that's one of the things that you kind of need for a movie like this. Since it is a remake, you kind of need those voices, just kind of like the, what I was talking about in some podcasts before about the whole Shrek remake and all that stuff. It's like, you need notable voices. You had Mike Myers in there and you had, uh, uh, what is his name? Uh, Eddie Murphy. You need voices that are going to come out and be its own, you know, and this, hopefully the voices stand out to where it was like, this was magical, you know, so, and they did good with the Jungle Book as far as the voices, Bill Murray was good as Baloo, and then you got, uh, was it Shere Khan, I think that's his name, yeah, Shere Khan, uh, Idris Alba doing his thing, he already got like a deep voice, kind of menacing, so, that was really good, so that's all that this movie really needs to really stand out, but, in any case, let's go ahead and jump to the next trailer, which I am playing catch up on, which is the final Aquaman trailer. Now, Aquaman is not too, too far away at all. <laughs> you know, uh, it's almost getting close to being, we're almost close to being in the month of December. And, you know, Aquaman is coming out, what, it's the 21st of next month. So, we're only a few weeks away. And so far, the anticipation for this movie has been crazy bonkers. But I'm going to speak on that in a little bit. But the trailer was awesome. I like the other trailer for, like a lot. I do. But this one was pretty awesome itself. Uh, you get more of a look of what the movie really is about. And kind of like the MacGuffin, what they're trying to get. If You don't know what a MacGuffin is. It's just a thing that the main characters or the main villain has to search for in order to push the plot along, you know. And in this movie, it's the MacGuffin. The MacGuffin is uh, basically Aquaman's trident. Not the one that he has, but it's the one that I guess is supposed to be the most powerful of them all. Uh, and he's supposed to retrieve it, and it basically in the in the trailer it says that whoever possesses it, if your intentions are good or evil or whatever, it holds immense power. So in the wrong hands, it can do crazy damage. In the right hands, it can mend the earth and well the land and the sea together, you know, and make that connection. And so Aquaman is sent basically is kind of bred to be that person to bring together the land dwelling beings and the sea dwelling beings together you know and that's basically what it is and his brother wants that you know triton so that he can have the sea take over that he can bring atlantis back up to where it was before before it went down into the sea and he doesn't want any of that he just wants Atlantis to be the supreme place and anybody that's on land are just going to just perish and that's basically what it is so he has to stop his brother from doing that and on along the way you get Amber Heard's character I think her name is uh Mara Mara I think that's what it is have she's helping along and then you get William Defoe William Defoe his character, I believe he wasn't in the other trailers. This is the first time we've seen his character in this movie or, you know, in the trailer or whatever and what his role is. And his role is basically he's the teacher of Aquaman, of Arthur Curry, and just he's there to guide him. I don't think he's going to be in a movie too, too much, but he is more than likely just the person that trained him and just let him know things that he needs to know and then sends him on his path. But, I mean, it's it, it showed a crazy amount, and it just shows just kind of, like, the differences of, like, 
when Aquaman is swimming and why his eyes turn a different color so that he can actually see better underwater. And I thought that that was actually pretty cool. And then they also, you know, when you're looking at the trailer, you can tell that they've took a lot from Avatar because when you look at Avatar and just like how a lot of the vibrant colors come out, the neons and all that stuff, it's like, it's just to give it a really good look. And that's basically what they did for this underworld, you know, uh, for this, you know, underworld Atlantis or whatever. For the undersea, you know, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> but in any case, uh, you can see that they took a lot from Avatar, which is nothing wrong with that. Movies take from other movies all the time. Even if you don't notice it, you know, um, it, they do it. And th it works for it. And this is basically just when you're looking at the trailer, you can kind of guess that this is where they're, you know, what Avatar 2 may end up looking like. Since the second one, I believe, is taking place under the sea since the title is Way of the Water, uh, Way of Water, whatever the hell it's called, is taken primarily underneath, you know, underwater. So, more than likely, we're getting a glimpse of what you know, Avatar 2 may look like. So, I, I don't have no problem with that. Uh, when it comes down to it, this this trailer, it looks awesome. It looks just as awesome as the second one. Uh, I kind of favor the second one a little bit more because of just the action scene that showed up in it. But this one does a really good job of just selling it and letting us know more about what we're in for. The thing that stands out to me, it just stood out between this trailer and the second trailer as well, is that Black Manta looked like he's not going to have a big role. It's just going to be about uh, Aquaman's brother. I think it's, I think it's Ocean Master. I think that's his name. But I think his name was Norm or something like that. <laughs> but it, it shows that it's really going to be more about him and Aquaman and everything else. But he's going to play a role kind of similar. I'm just guessing. He's more than likely going to play a role similar to like uh, Boba Fett. You know, just kind of like a mercenary or bounty hunter type person that just come in and try to take down Arthur, you know. And then they might have a battle where, you know, he ends up going head to head with him and he takes him down. Or we don't know his motiv we don't know his motivations. He looks like he has some heavy motivations. Hopefully it does come out really good up in the movie, but I don't know. Hopefully they have a good balance of everything. But the trailer looks awesome. Looks very awesome. I myself am a person that's going to definitely check this out uh, opening weekend. And that actually leads me to this. So I'm going to talk about it real quick before I go to the next trailer. But they were doing a promotion on Adam Tickets. If you guys don't have Adam Tickets or know what Adam Tickets is, Adam Tickets is basically a thing like Fandango or, you know, just stuff like that. It's an online purchasing thing to where you can purchase tickets from your movie theaters online or whatever. And uh, you can also download an app to do it. And that's one thing that I have. And so they had a thing like last week where they were doing an early screening for Amazon Prime members for, M uh, for Aquaman on the 15th, a week before it comes out. And from what I've heard, this, is, this movie did more pre-sales than any other movie in Adam, you know, in Adam Ticket's history. You know, and that's just, I'm not talking about like just regularly, whatever, but just using the service Adam through any other thing from Last Jedi to Infinity War to whatever and all that stuff. Aquaman sold the most tickets than any other movie in Adam's history. So just put it blank, plainly like that. I needed to figure out how to uh, put that together. But in any case, that's, that's like, that's awesome. Because one thing that that does tell me that when a movie is doing something like that, that just shows that it has faith in it. Last year, uh, Jumanji 2, Welcome to the Jungle, did that. And that movie was awesome. I, I had my prejudice against it. I had my bias against it. And like, there's no reason for, you know, a sequel in this. And I ended up watching the movie and I ended up loving it. Th that movie was really awesome. It was kind of, it was a sequel but somewhat of a soft reboot because they are doing a another they're doing a sequel to that so it's going to bring back the rock and kevin hart and all them so 
you know, it, it worked. It did something, and it showed that they had confidence. And watching the movie last year, like, yeah, they should have confidence because this movie was really good and how they did it. And that's what we've seen with Warner Brothers and Aquaman. It's with all the other movies that they got, like, they got five out of five movies, two of them are, like, the best to me. You know, out of all the movies that, you know, DC has put out recently within the DCEU or the BV universe, as I, BVS universe, as I like to call it. But this shows that they have a lot of confidence in it. If they're going to put it out a week prior for Amazon members and stuff, they just show that they have a lot of confidence in it. So, and you got James Wan as director, and he's done great with, like, Saw, uh, Insidious, uh, The Conjuring movies. I mean, in, in Furious 7, a few years back. Furious 7. So, yeah, that just showed that he has a lot of confidence. Well, they have a lot of confidence. So, I can't wait to see this movie. Really can't. So, let's go on to the next trailer, which I don't really have too much to talk about. So, it's basically Deadpool 2 being re-released into theaters. But, this time it's called Once Upon a Deadpool. Now, I talked about this um, in one of my podcasts where they were doing an untitled Deadpool movie and putting it out in theaters. We didn't know what it was. Uh, and one one thing was that it was going to be a PG-13 version, which that is absolutely correct. It's a PG-13 version of Deadpool. So they went back, reshot some scenes or, you know, took out a lot of the uh, gory scenes and all that stuff, put new scenes up in there and just kind of like trimmed it down to where it can be a PG-13 and more than likely, the word is, is that they're doing this not because of the whole Marvel, Disney deal and all that stuff, but because this movie cannot be marketed in China. And China, as we all know, or if you don't know, is a big market. Like if movies don't do well in the U.S. or just America... China is one of the things that will send it over the edge. It's movies that have done horribly. I think Transformers was one of them. Went, uh, went across seas and then just did Gangbusters. And just with the Fast and Furious. Fast and Furious is one of those movies where, you know, if it do decent here or whatever, it's going to do Gangbusters over there in China. China is a huge market for movies like this. So when it comes down to it, they want to make money for Deadpool, and this will be a good way. Now, the only thing is that I'm looking at it is they count this money toward the other version that came out, or is this kind of like a, its own separate thing? I would think it would be collective, which is kind of a no-brainer. It's like, duh, like it's the same movie, but it's kind of not, but it kind of is, because it has a totally different title, and then you got Fred Savage up in there, who is basically brought in by Deadpool and forced for Deadpool to read him a story or tell him about the PG-13 version of Deadpool 2. And one of the scenes that kind of like actually had me laughing is that you got this two old couple sitting on the bench and Deadpool is sitting right next to him and they look like the couple from Up. And so he uh, tells them that he loves their work in um, Up. And then he looks at the guy and he's like, don't get too attached. Like, that is hilarious. Like, that's one of the things I'm looking for is that I want to see the new jokes that they have in this movie. I have no problem with seeing Deadpool 2 again or Once Upon a Deadpool. This time, I could take my son to go see it. Definitely. And um, I wouldn't have a problem seeing it again. Deadpool 2, I've really enjoyed it. It's one of my favorite comic book movies of this year. I really enjoyed that movie. Uh, so I wouldn't mind seeing it again. Plus, you got new scenes and then you got a new something new happening with it. Hell yeah, I'll go see it. It don't matter. I enjoyed the trailer. The trailer didn't really have too, too much to offer because it's essentially the same movie. But I'm definitely going to go check it out. But in any case, that ends trailer reviews. So let's go ahead and jump into movie news. So... Um, Disney has came out with the name of their new streaming service, which we didn't know prior to before. It could have been called anything. It could have been called Disney, 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 or more Disney. Or we got Disney streaming service. You know, it could have been something like that. You know, uh, DSS, Disney streaming service. Oh, you know, it's actually not pretty. Okay, but anyway, so it's called Disney Plus with the plus symbol. And so it's... Thinking about it, it's not the best name, 
but it's actually you know for one that's one of those names where it doesn't like uh, okay whatever but you know it's kind of like one of those names when i think about it it's like it's not a very good name but it's a name that you know you're it's gonna it's gonna sink in it's gonna fit you're gonna come accustomed to it as you as it keeps you know playing in your head and all that stuff but also it's one of those names that's really accurate because because with them offering what well, with them take you know doing the deal with fox and getting fox and you know in all of the ips that they got as far as movies and shows it it's very is really an accurate name it, it's a very accurate name disney plus and i just want to know what they how they're going to do with this I'm, I'm guessing that they're going to have an adult section and then they're going to have a kid section or family section or something like that and they're probably going to do something similar to you know how netflix does it if you have netflix you already know that they have it to where you know you have a kid zone to where if your kids have an account on there they can go on there and it's all kids stuff they can't find any of the dope stuff and then they're probably going to have a section where it's like all disney and then it's going to be like disney plus section where it have all the you know fox things or maybe they just want to blend them together so i don't know but i think it's a really accurate name uh i don't know if they're gonna change it which i doubt it i doubt it but i mean it's okay i'm gonna more than likely get accustomed to it to where it's like okay yeah yeah it is what it is but i mean i liked it it it, it makes sense it makes total sense to what they've done and what they're doing so i have no problem with it uh blah 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 I think that should be it. Yeah, that's it for uh, movie news. And so let's go ahead and jump into the box office and stuff. So this isn't talking about this weekend. This is going into last weekend and everything else. So I really don't have any predictions because like how I do, I will have give you guys my predictions. What actually took the weekend, what's coming soon, and then my predictions for the coming weekend. But since I skipped the week, I didn't put down any predictions. So basically, let's go ahead and jump what dominated the weekend. So Fantastic Beast took over the weekend with 62.1 million domestically, did 67 67.2 million, and worldwide took in 258 million dollars. Uh, and uh, Dr. Seuss, The Grinch, came in over the weekend, 38.5 million domestically, 103.6 million, and worldwide, 156.8 million. And Bohemian Rhapsody took the number three spot over the weekend with 16 million domestically, 143.3 million, and worldwide, 411.9 million. Uh, Instant Family took over the weekend 14.5 million domestically 130.1 million and worldwide 387.8 million and widows took the number five spot with 12.3 million domestically 13.4 million and worldwide 20.6 million and uh what stands out real quick to me is uh basically nothing i mean it everything seems pretty decent you know uh over the weekend or last weekend, it was like, I don't know, like, with Fantastic Beasts, I knew that that was going to take over. I knew that that was going to be one of the tough things because it's a recognizable property out of the other family. What, uh, Insta Family came out with it and Widows came out with it. Uh, Widows is a movie that do look good, that did look good over the, you know, with the trailers and everything else. But basically, yeah, Fantastic Beasts 2 was going to take that because of the simple fact that, yeah, it's just a recognizable IP. You have recognizable characters in Widows with Viola Davis and uh, Liam Neeson, and then you got Michelle Rodriguez, and then you got Chris from uh, Get Out up in there. But, you know, it's it's one of those properties where it looks good, but we don't know. And Fantastic Beasts is connected to a highly successful franchise within the Harry Potter universe. And not even just with movies, but with the books. So, yeah, that one was going to do, that one was going to do real good. But, uh, Instant Family, that movie was, I don't know, I thought that that should have been a little bit higher because that movie was really good. But when you're looking at the other movies that came out, you got Bohemian Rhapsody, which was a movie that I did really enjoy that a lot of people are fans of queen that 
with the money that has been making, I didn't think that that was going to be knocked out. But, uh, and then Dr. Seuss with the Grinch. It's a family movie going in toward Christmas. So, yeah, I mean, Instant Family is one of those. But, you know, when you're going against, you know, a Grinch, which is another recognizable IP and has had successful um, incarnations before with the Jim Carrey one. And even the one before that and everything else with the Dr. Seuss books, it's a name that is a household name. Any and everybody knows about the Grinch. And then Bohemian Rhapsody, like I said, there is a lot of fans of Queen and they've done a lot of music that is considered classics in American culture. So, yeah, man, when you look at that, Instant Family really didn't have a chance, uh, but it did, but not too big of a chance. And so, I'm going to jump into the other thing, uh, this new thing that I'm going to be throwing into the box office segment called Who Won the Weekend? Or what won? I, I think it would be like Who Won the Weekend? So, out of the movies that had came out, which was uh, Instant Family, Widows, and Fantastic Beasts. For me, this is just all my opinion. This is not based on numbers or fan or popular, um, you know, you know, popular vote or whatever. But this is the movies that won the weekend for me. And the movie that won the weekend was Instant Family. Like, out of all those, I enjoyed that more than Widows. And I enjoyed it way more than Fantastic Beasts. My, like, want was maybe that Fantastic Beasts maybe would have been the better. Like, just asking me before i seen these movies i would have told you that fantastic beast would have probably been the best one widows number two and then instant family was number three but instant family was a actually pretty good ass film that's one of those films where anytime i see it in a room with somebody who hasn't seen it, i'm like oh that was such a good movie you know i have to tell people and when the movie is that good that you have to tell people then they've done something good uh, Widows was a movie that I did like, I didn't love. It had a lot of things that was not wrong, but I just didn't like it, you know, as what I thought it was going to be. But it still was an all-out good film. I still would, you know, tell anybody. If they are, fran are fans and, you know, want to see Fantastic Beasts and, you know, or Widows and only have money for one movie, I'll tell them, go, go check out Widows. You know, unless you're a big Harry Potter fan, then I'll say that. But if you only had money for this uh, past weekend to go see one of those films, I'd be like, man, go ch go check out Widows. You know, if Instant Family wasn't up in there, but, you know, just, you know, that's basically, yeah, it was, it was good. It could have been better, but I really did enjoy it. And Fantastic Beasts had its problems. It was just one of those movies where I was just kind of disappointed in what I got out of the thing. A lot of it was just being confusing. A lot of it was just my surroundings. But I am going to go see it again. So that I can make sure that I'm not tweaking. And hopefully I get a better, you know, uh, you know, a better look at it and whatnot. So what came out this week? What came out this week? Because these movies came out Wednesday. So we got Creed 2. Ralph Breaks the Internet, Robin Hood 2018, Green Book went worldwide, which that did come out last week, but it hit worldwide this week. And the front one, uh, the front runner came out worldwide this week. So um, basically, I seen all those movies except for the front runner. Uh, and I basically can tell you guys, I basically sincerely can tell you guys um, what won the weekend for me? So I don't even have to put it up in it. Well, you know, I'm, I'm going to save it for next week. That's all I'm going to do. I'm going to save it for next week. But I already know what won the week or the weekend for me or whatever. So, but basically, yeah, those are the movies that are coming out. The ones that I was most anticipated for was Creed and Ralph Breaks the Internet. Uh, Robin Hood, I liked the trailers. I wasn't too astounded. I was just seeing it out of curiosity. Green Book, it looked interesting, seen out of curiosity. And Front Runner, I don't know, it, it was one of those movies where it's like, I want to go to the movies, but I've seen everything, which kind of is the case. You know, I just be like, okay, let me go see Front Runner because I haven't seen that one. So that's basically will be it. Uh, my weekend predictions. After seeing, you know, the Green Book, oh man, 
Um, I think I don't know if the Green Book is gonna. I'm, I'm gonna keep my top five. I was just about to edit it, but I'm about to keep my top five because I think Green Book may end up being in the top five, but I don't know. Uh, but Ralph breaks the internet for sure is gonna take the number one spot. Creed two is gonna be a close second, close second. And then we're going to have Fantastic Beasts take the number, well, Fantastic Beasts, Crimes of Rindewald take the number three spot. Dr. Seuss, uh, Grinch knocked down to number four, and Bohemian Rhapsody is going to be at number five. So those are my weekend predictions and everything that goes along with that. And so with that said, that ends this episode, episode 99 of the Take One Podcast. And the next episode, of course, is going to be episode 100 and so i can't wait to do that one i don't know what i'm gonna do for that one but um i guess we'll see but until then i will catch you guys later thank you for listening peace out hey hey before you guys leave make sure you hit that like button as well as that subscribe button and you see that little bell make sure you hit that to turn on your notifications that way you'll be notified for anything that appears on my channel hope to see you guys next time peace out